Hey everyone, today we'll have a look at one of the miniest mini PCs you can get. The Knockbox G5 by Team K-Tech, which costs less than $150 while being a serious Windows PC that can absolutely manage everyday tasks while also being very efficient and quiet. So let's talk about that. This is Hubwood. The GMK Tech G5 is powered by the 12 watt 4 core 4 threads CPU, the Intel N97, which is, despite what its name would suggest, supposed to be slightly faster than the famous 6 watt powered Intel N100. Though, to be fair, we are only talking about a few percent more due to its slightly higher clock speed of up to 3.6 GHz on all cores. It comes with the same integrated GPU as in the N100 with Iris XE based graphics and 24 EUs activated. Furthermore, Team KTech pairs it with 12GB of soldered LPDDR5 4800MHz RAM in dual channel mode and in this case a 2242 sized 512GB SATA M.2 SSD with reading and writing speeds of, of around 500MB per second. You can also upgrade the SSD to up to 2TB. We also get Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2 and Windows 11 Pro. It comes with a 35W USB-C power adapter that blocks the only available USB-C port. By the way, I also tried to use a USB-C hub which doesn't work as the USB-C port doesn't do data but is for powering the device only. Now on the front we are getting two USB 3.2 ports. At the side we're getting a micro SD card slot which is always nice to have for some extra disk space for stuff like retro games and a Kensington lock. And at the back we're getting two HDMI ports, another USB 3.2 port and a gigabit LAN port as well as the 3.5mm audio jack. And once more Team KTech is offering some nice and stylish packaging. The full plastic body weighs a total of only 206 gram and the size is only 7.2 by 7.2 by 4.4 centimeters in size, while the smaller power adapter will be placed right in your wall socket. In general, it's really small and for comparison, I've placed it next to my Xbox controller for you to get a better idea on just how small it is. You're so cute. For my testing, I paired it with a small Bluetooth keyboard and my vertical Bluetooth mouth for that perfect minimalistic and clean feeling on the desk. On idle, the G5 is literally unhearable while only using around 7 watt according to my watt meter. Watching a 4K video on YouTube utilizes around 13 watt and is still pretty quiet most of the time, with the fan slightly ramping up for a second every once in a while. And even under full load in Cinebench R23, it only uses around 23 watt and it really doesn't get too loud that way. For my unit, the CPU seemed to thermal throttle right away with around 95 degrees Celsius under full load, while on idle it sits around 58 to 60 degrees Celsius at a room temperature of around 21 degrees Celsius. Now opening the G5 is super easy with just releasing four little Phillips screws and that gives you access to the upgradable M.2 and you could also swap out the Wi-Fi module if you wanted to after getting in a bit deeper into the device. The booting sequence from being completely turned off into Windows took around 28 seconds. For Cinebench R23 it scored a total of up to 3017 for the multi-core and 791 points for the single core test. In Geekbench 6 it scored 1066 for the single core and 3111 for the multi-core score. Which surprisingly, just as for PC Mark 10, which you will see just in a bit, it's just a bit less than what I achieved for the N100 the other day, despite the higher maximum wattage it can draw, which is due to the slight thermal throttling probably caused by the super small form factor. In PC Mark 10 it got 2662 points, which isn't a lot, but indicates it's perfectly powerful enough for all everyday tasks like browsing, text editing, even light video editing, and most things the Windows ecosystem has to offer. It would surely serve well as a living room PC or a small server of some kind as well. But speaking frankly, it really is powerful enough to replace a full desktop PC if gaming or advanced content creation isn't your main concern. I tried to watch some 4K footage on YouTube via the Edge browser, which seemed to work pretty good, despite a few frame drops here and there, which I really didn't notice while watching the video. 
In 3 d Mark Fire Strike, it scored over 5,000 points for the Night Raid benchmark, 1,277 points for Fire Strike, and only 275 points for the new Steel Nomad Light benchmark. And now let's have a look at some games on the G5, whereas it should be clear that it's not a gaming machine per se, but it surely can do some lighter gaming and emulators. It actually is able to run Fortnite to some extent using the performance mode at 720p with low settings and 100% resolution scaling. It's not perfectly smooth, but after a second round, the FPS became more stable for sure with around 40 to 70 FPS. The more I played, the less stuttering occurred, so keep that in mind. GTA 5 ran surprisingly well at 720p and low settings with around 40 to 55 FPS and mostly a pretty stable frame time. That's probably kind of comparable to what the game looked on the PS3 and it's actually doable. The 12GB of RAM seemed to come in handy in that case and even though the game has been around for like what now 9 years on Windows, it is still astonishing that this little nutbox can actually run it that good. I also tested Skyrim on medium settings at 720p and saw around 30 to 40 FPS while the frame time graph indicated a lot of micro stuttering, so maybe lower settings would be a good option in this case. But despite the wild frame time graph, it seemed to be playable alright overall, all things considered. And the game offers dozens of hours of fun if you're into that kind of stuff, really. Genshin Impact at 900p and very low settings ran with around 30 to 40 FPS, and once again, the frame time graph was quite unstable, but it seemed to be okay nevertheless overall. I'm aware that especially the recorded region in the beginning of the game is supposed to be a bit easier on the hardware, so it might just run a little worse later on. You could also of course play a lot of old games and stuff like Minecraft or League of Legends and probably most games around 2013 and earlier. I was also quickly attaching my emulation drive with Retrobat, which worked perfectly fine on most games, just like with the N100 mini PC I tested recently. Even Super Mario Kart 8 via the Wii U seemed to work perfectly fine, so retro emulation gaming should be absolutely no problem for the G5 with its N97. Alright, so it's safe to say that it's overall a pretty powerful and super tiny mini PC that has a lot of potential and use cases for sure, while in this configuration it only costs around $150 with worldwide free shipping. If you're interested in checking it out for yourself, make sure to use the link in the description and get it directly via GMK Tech. Also for full transparency, GMK Tech sent me over the review unit, but I'm not getting paid for the review and at all and they didn't tell me what to say either. I also want to point out that other reviews suggest it should perform slightly better, so maybe the thermal throttling just occurred on my review unit. A quick intermission. I'm currently editing this video and GMK Tech answered about the throttling issue. They suggested reapplying thermal paste, which I actually did. It's a quite advanced step while it's doable if you have the right tools. Turns out there was a lot of thermal paste applied in the first place. After replacing it with Arctic MX4, the temperature dropped drastically and the CPU didn't thermal throttle anymore at all, even after 10 minutes of Cinebench R23, for which I now was able to score up to 3000 points in the multicore test. I also reran PC Mark 10, which now scored over 3000 points. So that definitely paid off. I guess it was my unit. But of course that shouldn't have happened in the first place, which is why I kept the original review. I also want to point out that you most likely won't notice the speed difference in everyday tasks, but I surely noticed that the fan was now running much quieter as well. The temps now didn't exceed 90 degrees Celsius um, and it was really quiet even under full load. And that's all for today. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that like button for more laptop, handheld and mini PC content in the future. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.